What the hell is a biosimilar and why do I need to know about it? The topic of this discussion is biosimilars in multiple sclerosis. Or we could say, what the hell is a biosimilar and why do I need to know about it? And I wanna start off by sharing this research paper with you. So this article, it's bothersome to me. Fingolimod, which is an oral agent to treat MS that came out, it became FDA approved on a patent in October of 2010 is now no longer on patent. So after 10 years, drugs go off patent. And when they go off patent, they can be turned into generics. And so now in 2023, almost 2024, there are several generic Gelenias that are on the market. Generic Gelenias. And here's a paper uh, which looked at some of these generic Gelenias and what it found was very disturbing. Gelinia assay uh, analysis of U.S. generic capsule products reveals variation in fingolimod content beyond the recommended acceptable criteria. In English, when they studied these generic um, molecules, these generic gelinias, they found that they weren't the same as branded gelinia. And in fact, there was significant variation in some of the generic gelinias were really, really different than the actual product. And so that's super disturbing. And I wanna spend some time sharing with you why I think this is an important topic and what we need to know uh, to avoid risk. All right, so first of all, we have to do a little bit of um, definitions, all right? So the first definition that I wanna teach you during this micro lecture is what is a biologic? Okay, so a biologic is a type of medicine which is made from a living source. So it's a medicine which is either made from a human or from an animal. And it's a medicine which is made from a living source which is not taken as a pill. It's either taken as a shot or as an infusion, all right? So let me explain to you why. What you see in this picture are three examples of MS medications. So on the far left, you see uh, teraflutamide, which is the long name for Abagio. So Abagio is a pill which is used to treat MS. It's a pill that you take once a day, and it's considered a small molecule. And if you look just under where it says small molecule, you can see a little itty bitty tiny drawing of the molecular structure of teraflutamide, of Abagio. So Abagio is a small molecule and it's made in a laboratory with chemicals and they synthesize this small molecule of teraflutamide. And when teraflutamide goes off label, teraflutamide is now off label, then you can make a generic. And all you have to do to make a generic is you have to make a molecule that looks pretty similar to that molecule, all right? So you go to a laboratory and you mix up some chemicals and you make a chemical structure which looks similar to teraflutamide, and they never ever have to test it in humans. So you heard me right. If you take a generic small molecule, it doesn't have to be tested in human beings. As long as the generic manufacturer can demonstrate that it looks like the original molecule, that's good enough. And they say, okay, well, that's close enough, then you can approve that and you can give that to humans, even though it's never ever been tested in humans. If you look in the, in the middle there, where it says glutyramer acetate. And glutyramer acetate, which is the codename for Copaxone, is a non-biologic complex drug. So it's not a biologic, it's not made by um, a human or an animal. It's still a complex set of chemicals, but it's complex, it's bigger. And you can see in the center there, the structure of glutyramer acetate is larger than the structure of teraflutamide. And just like with a small molecule, a non-biologic complex drug, if you make a generic, and there are many generics of glutyramer acetate, you do not have to study it in human beings. You do not have to prove that it works in humans. Now, if you look at the third column, the one that I have in that box, um, you see the word rituximab. So rituximab is an off-label treatment for multiple sclerosis. It's a very effective one. It's a monoclonal antibody. 
It's, an, it's a biologic smart bomb, and it is a biologic agent. Remember the definition that we threw up of a biologic agent just a second ago. A biologic agent is a medicine. It's developed from a living source, so human or animal, and it's given as an shot or an infusion. So this um, rituximab molecule is not a chemical that you mix in a lab. It's an antibody, and they use living cells to generate it. So they use um, living mammalian cells to create that molecule which is pretty darn interesting. And the reason that it has to be given via infusion is because if you take that structure, which is mostly protein and sugars, and you swallow it, it goes in your stomach, and your stomach does exactly what it does with any protein or sugar. It dissolves it. So if you eat steak, your stomach dissolves it. If you eat a monoclonal antibody, which is made of protein and sugar, you're gonna dissolve it. And so they have to be infused in the vein. Now, here's the thing. Biosimilars are not like generics. So we call the original biologic the reference medicine, all right? Or the innovator medicine, it's the first one. And then when you make a biosimilar, it has to um, not just be very, very similar in structure to that reference, but it also has to be tested in humans to prove that it works as well as the reference. So let's take it a step further. This shows you on the left the way that we develop reference biologics. So that would be like branded drugs like rituximab, Tysabri, Limtrada, um, Ocrevus, stuff like that, all right? And it starts at the bottom and then goes up. So at the bottom, you do a chemical analysis of the antibody, and then you test it in monkeys in preclinical testing before you get to humans. And then you study its behavior in humans with the PKPD, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. And those are doctor words for the way the molecule is absorbed in the human body and the way that you get rid of the molecule. And so they study PKPD of the molecule of the biologic in a human, then they do extensive clinical testing in humans. So as an MS neurologist and clinical trialist, I have done 20 years now of various MS clinical trials where we get a product where we've studied the analytics, we've studied the preclinical, we've studied the PKPD, and now we're gonna test it in people with MS to prove that it works. And that's how you get a drug FDA approved if it's a biologic. Now, to approve a biosimilar, it's different. Look on the right, and we're gonna start at the bottom and go up. When you're dealing with a biosimilar, the first thing that you do is you do a lot of analytical characterization proving that the molecule that you made looks exactly like the molecule, um, or looks very, very, very similar, I should say, to the reference molecule. And you see there's a tremendous amount of work that goes in into structuring the new biologic so that it looks like the other biologic. So the biosimilar is very, 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 very similar to the original biologic, the reference one. Then once you've done that, then you do a small investigation in monkeys and preclinical testing. Then you do a small investigation looking at the PKPD meaning you wanna see how the new biosimilar is absorbed and excreted in the human body to make sure that it's very, very similar to the reference drug. And then lastly, you do clinical trials. So in a biosimilar molecule, just like with a reference biologic, you do clinical trials to prove that the drug works. And so I'm going to use biosimilar Tysabri as an example. So Tysabri is a biologic agent, all right? Tysabri is a monoclonal antibody. It's an antibody made of protein and sugars, and it's made in mammalian cells, and it's one of the most effective MS medicines that's out there. And what we, what we have found is Tysabri is off of its patent. It's been around since 2004, and there is now a biosimilar Tysabri. And the reason I'm giving this lecture is because you need to know what the hey hey a biosimilar is so that you can have an engaged conversation with your neurologist. And what you see here, starting at the bottom going up, is the path that a company took to get approval of the biosimilar natalizumab. So they started off by making a monoclonal antibody and the biosimilar looked 
very, very similar to the um, reference drug, which is Tysabri. Then they went to preclinical testing and they did this in monkeys and they found that it seemed to be copacetic in monkeys. And then they went to the PKPD where they tested the drugs in about 450 healthy controls. So not people with MS, but just humans. And they gave them the Tysabri and they gave them the new biosimilar to see how it was absorbed in the body and how the body got rid of it. And what they found was it was near identical. I'll show you that in a second. And then lastly, they did a clinical trial in multiple sclerosis with not very many people, with just 265 people. And I'll show you that as well. So what you see here is the PKPD. So this is the pharmacokinetics dynamics of the medicine. And what you see is in the red, this is the reference Tysabri, the branded Tysabri in the United States. And in the black is the new biosimilar and they completely overlap. What this teaches scientists is that the biosimilar natalizumab behaves the same in the human body as does the reference Tysabri. And then when you take it a step further, this is the clinical trial. And in the clinical trial, what you see is people with relapsing MS were randomly assigned to either take the gray, and the gray bar is 131 people that got the new drug, the biosimilar natalizumab, or in the green, 133 people got reference arm uh, actual Tysabri, and here's how they behaved. This graph shows you MRI lesions, and what you see is there was no difference going out 48 weeks in the number of new spots that someone had on the reference arm Tysabri compared to the biosimilar natalizumab. That's very reassuring. And then they look at uh, clinical features and what they found was the disability was the same in both and the relapse rate was the same in both. Lastly, they looked at safety. And what they found was the risk of infections, the risk of death, the risk of side effects making you stop the drug were the same in one medication, the biosimilar as compared to the reference arm Tysabri. And so that concludes the didactic 